What you will learn over the next 20 minutes or so will absolutely double your chances. I guarantee you. I mean, by the end of this video, if you feel you haven't at least doubled your chances, just write a really, really nasty comment down below. That's fine. I will approve that comment. Okay, let's start. And I want to start with a question. What steps do you have to go through to get a job? Now, you'd probably say, well, it's the job application, right? First, and then job interview, job offer, right? I mean, application, interview, job offer. Now, there's a mistake here, right? It's not a three-step journey. It's a four-step journey. And misunderstanding this is one of the major reasons why most people fail job interviews, right? In practice, the steps are job application, but then a HR interview and hiring interview, then job, job, job offer. So the important thing is to understand that um, hiring manager interview and HR interview are so different that you should never group them together because what works for your HR interview will never work for your hiring manager interviews. It just won't, right? And, and vice versa. So they're completely different people who serve very different purposes in the organization and therefore they look for very different things in you, right? HR are recruiters, yeah? They are there, they're shortlisters. They're, they're there to save hiring managers time so the hiring manager won't have to interview 100 people, right? They're shortlisters, right? Whereas hiring managers are the people you will be working for if you get the job, right? They're people like me. They're your managers in your department, right? Okay, so let's start with what works for, for, for each one, right? Let's start with the HR. Uh, because you still have to pass there the HR's interview to progress on to hiring manager, right? So let's start with this one. Know this. 99% of the time, HR will never know the intricacies, the, the complex details of the role that they're hiring for, right? Or, or they're shortlisting for. I mean, how can they? Today, they hire for marketing. Tomorrow, they hire for, uh, hire for accounting, right? Uh, the next day, operations. The next day, for a role in the factory, right? So they'll never really know what makes the cut other than what they've written in the job description with a little bit of an help from the hiring manager, right? But keep this in mind. Their understanding of the subject matter is incredibly low, right? Incredibly low. This right here is how you create a massive advantage right almost an unfair advantage against those who don't know this right listen to this because the hr right don't understand the subject matter one thing they can't really do is fail the subject matter expert hiring managers can right hr can't they can't take that risk so to pass your interviews with HR, you will need to overwhelm HR with your expertise, exaggerate, exaggerate them if you want to, right? Go into extreme details, because unless you screw up in other areas, HR will not be able to take that risk of failing an expert. Hiring manager can, HR can't. Now, I, I want to give you a few examples. For example, if I talk about the 80% recoverability rating we achieved in our last five consulting projects, you know, will HR have any idea what that is? What do you mean? recoverability recoverability rating right in fact most often they don't they don't want to look like idiots so they won't even ask what it means right they're like okay 80 percent recoverability oh wow that sounds great right <laughs> they have no idea like and, and what if i position myself as the primary catalyst for that result because i used chimposyntrias mm? and that i'm one of the few people in the world who is an expert chimposyntrian mm? it's an entirely made up word chimposyntria <laughs> Um, if, if, if you're a salesperson, talk about the fact that you are one of the few people in the country who uses 7S method from Brian Tracy, for example, right? Or complex funnel management strategy, which you learned again from, you know, Brian Tracy or whoever, right? And you implemented that throughout your career and that's how you drive your lead generation, right? If you're in, let's say, modeling, right? 
talk about how your models have reached 95% confidence in, in, in intervals and that you use chimposyntrias to reduce the standard deviation errors, right? It's the power of chimposyntria, guys. You, you get this already, I'm telling you. So the point is, get as specific and as technical as you can and overwhelm the HR with your expertise. And you will see, if they are seriously hiring, right, that they're not monkeying around, which sometimes they do, right? They will schedule your next interview with the hiring manager immediately. Now you know how to do better with HR interviews, right? But we still have to pass the hiring manager interviews, right? And one thing here is, is, is very important. You can't BS your way through your hiring manager interviews. It just won't work, right? Because the biggest quality above all the skills and experiences we wanna share is our trustworthiness. Right, so no chimposyntria stuff here. Uh, just who you are as a colleague, as a human being, right? There's one thing that makes the biggest difference when it comes to hiring manager interviews, it's your humanity, like who you are as a person. Um, in fact, I, I wanna share with you a story. That's actually how I lost a great opportunity with Bloomberg right when I was graduating from my MBA degree. This was like before my management consulting career started. Um, so at that time, I was interested in financial services because I started my career with Standard & Poor's, so I thought it would be a good continuum, right? And Bloomberg is a great employer. So now in this story, you'll understand how something so simple can make the biggest difference, right? Anyway, I had a great interview with HR, with Bloomberg, right? Uh, just as we discussed earlier, I overwhelmed um, her with, with my knowledge uh, and expertise in financial services, and, and she immediately booked me uh, for an interview with a hiring manager. Great, right? And hiring manager's name was uh, Stelvio. Um, so if, if I get the job, it was gonna be my direct line manager. Before the interview, I've done my homework, homework very well, right? Um, and, and because of that homework, my interview was absolutely fantastic, right? I mean, I presented their solution so well that I was like, nailed it. I mean, this was amazing, right? Um, and I, I always say this, interview is a performance act, you know? And right there, I thought I delivered Al Pacino level performance, you know, Robert De Niro level, you know, it, it was that good. So I went home waiting for my job offer and there's absolutely zero doubt in my mind that I did an amazing job. Anyway, as I'm sure you guessed, um, that offer never came, right? Now, this made no sense to me, how? Later on, HR and I had a coffee catch up. Um, I think at the time she was flirting with me a little bit, so she probably thought it was a date. Um, anyway, in that, um, in that date, uh, she told me the whole thing. She told me what really happened, right? She didn't give me a bullshit answer, you know? Um, oh, the hiring manager thought you were overqualified or, or they thought you were underqualified. You know, it was just like, she gave it to me straight. The real problem was that the hiring manager, Stelvio, right? He felt intimidated. He didn't feel intimidated because I was so good. You know, I was such an expert, such an incredible talent. No, not at all. He acknowledged my potential, right? But rather he just didn't feel he could trust me, right? He didn't see me as someone who would make him look good, right? Help him flourish in his career. He felt that I would look after my very own career not necessarily my managers. And you know what is funny? He was 100% right. He was 100% right. Because at the time, I was just way too ambitious, you know, right out of MBA. Um, I was young, you know, I hadn't, at that time, I hadn't really understood that it's a win-win, right? For you to win, your manager also has to win. Otherwise, you both lose, right? I didn't know this equation at the time. And, um, you know, if your managers feel they're threatened by you, if they feel you may in the future gone for their own role, what do you think they will do? They will do. Do you think they will choose their own careers or your, your career, right? The salary they use to pay for their kids' education and healthcare, right? And health, health of, of, of their career. That one or some strangers, right? You will lose in that situation. I mean, I was 29 at the time. Years later, now I'm 41. Um, so 
after having a really successful consultant career, you know, like many great clients, Coca-Cola, P&G, you know, Goldman Sachs, IBM, you name it. Um, after having worked with all the top teams, now that I know that this is this is how it is, right? I've, I've seen the situation in most of my clients, if not all. If your manager doesn't win, you don't win. It's a win-win or lose-lose, right? There's no win and lose. So there, you know, that's, that, that me, 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 it won't work. Companies, teams, they're all run by humans, right? Humans who have their own self-interest, right? Who have their own insecurities. So the sooner you understand this, sooner you achieve success. Okay, knowing this, right? In your hiring manager interviews, the first thing you have to, you have to accomplish is letting them know that you're a genuine person, you're ambitious, sure, but you're ambitious for your team, not for your own individual success, okay? And I'm sorry to say this, but it falls on your shoulders to prove this to the hiring manager. Prove that you are really a trustworthy person and that you will make them look good, okay? If it calls for praising the guy, so what, right? Praise the guy for his achievements, right? So what? Go, go compliment them for their achievements. You know, tell him or tell her you'd love to have the opportunity to work for for a leader like himself or herself. You, you got you, you got nothing to lose by saying these things, right? Um, you want them, the hiring managers, to take their guards down, right? They will not do that if they feel threatened. How to achieve this? Not the easiest thing in the world, but a few tricks. It can help you. Like the easiest one is to listen and find ways to turn their questions into conversations, right? Ask questions about them, about their journey in that firm, right? And listen super, like super carefully, right? Don't think about your answers next, right? Listen to what they are saying and ask follow-up questions if needed, right? If the hiring manager in the interview is speaking as much as you, that means you're rocking that interview, you're doing an absolutely amazing job. That is what you want. Take my word for it. Hiring managers will always uh, pick a candidate whom they feel they can trust over a candidate who has better experiences and skill sets. Did you get this? They can always train a newcomer, right? But they can't train someone with a bad attitude, right? Or someone who is gunning for their own role. Uh, it just won't work. So this is very, very important. I, ho I hope you paid attention to it, okay? Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, another very, very important thing. It is the unwritten requirements. These are the expectations from you, but unfortunately, they're not written in the job description. Right? They exist, right? They're very, very important but they exist only in the minds of the hiring managers, right? Even HR, even HR don't know these requirements, right? So they're critical. Um, but before I get there, uh, I want you to know something. Even if this interview you're attending soon, right? It doesn't work out. I do not want you to worry, right? It'll be fine because you can generate more interviews than you can even schedule, right? And, and with the best firms in your industry, you know, the, the PwC Consulting, Intel, you know, IBM, McKinsey, Procter & Gamble, Schneider, GE, you name it, right? Uh, the big banks, no problem. You know, with my help, you can generate incredible job interviews uh, because I designed uh, the perfect program for you. It's called LIG and over 7,000 people have already joined so far, right? And we have an 80% success rate. This is, an, this is an amazing rate, I mean, 80%, right? And only because of the strategy that I teach in the program, over 5,000 people have now incredible careers, right? Um, just like the career I had, some of them better, right? Um, like, because they used to, these guys used to make online applications, right? What, what a big mistake. Now they know what to do, right? Whether you're a fresh graduate or, or an experienced hire, it'll work for you. Anyway, the point is, don't worry, I have your back. Um, it won't be the last interview you ever attend, so there's no need to be nervous. Uh, but I still want you to be successful now, right? I want you to pass this interview and, and get the offer. Uh, but if you don't, fine, don't stress. Uh, just remember that I'm here for you. Um, I will leave the link in the description box below. So in the future, uh, you can come back and check it out and see if it is right for you, okay? 
but I hope you don't need it. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, it's not just a training program, Elijah. It also comes with a direct access to me for all your career questions for a lifetime. Uh, because getting a job is just the beginning, right? Achieving success in your career, um, that's a marathon, right? Not a sprint. Um, you'll need to make a lot of decisions uh, right. So I'll be there for you for that too. Anyway, back to unwritten requirements. So I have a, you know, I, I have a question for you. You held many roles in the past, right? You did. Um, think of your last job, yeah? Think of all the things you've done, all the variety of your tasks, right? Are they all in your resume, in your CV? No, right? Only just a few, yeah, maybe four or five, right? Why not? Well, fine, some of them aren't important enough to maybe mention, but some of them simply would, 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 would take too much space in your CV to list, right? Maybe then it will be a 50 pages long CV, right? And not two or three pages. Now imagine this, you get replaced for that role. Hmm? And HR is asking for, for help from the hiring manager to create a job description for that role, the, the one that you occupied. Would the hiring manager really write down 200 things that you did in that role for your replacement? No, right? Only just a few bullet points in that job description. Maybe five, maybe 10, right? Mostly really generic stuff. But it doesn't mean they're not in the minds of the hiring manager, right? The, the hiring managers they have in their minds the full list of the 200 things that they need from you, right? But job description says only five of those things. But it's all right up here. So when you attend an interview with the hiring manager, you're not only evaluated against what is written in the job description, but what is also not written, uh, but exists here. Now, okay, so how to, how to uncover these things, right? How to gain an advantage here, because we have to gain an advantage, right? Obviously, first, um, you can do a bit of an online research, right? You can talk to the experts and, you know, just people who you know working in that field, in that role. Uh, even if it's a different company, that's fine. You can write a post in LinkedIn and ask for an introduction for those people who have similar roles, right? And then try to understand the tools and, and the processes they use, right? Just two minutes of conversation will, will make a difference. Be resourceful here, right? But I want you to uncover at least a few of these things a few of these unwritten requirements because they will make a difference. What tools are they using? What software, right? And is, is that software um, integral uh, part in their business? I wanna give you an example here, okay? There's absolutely no way that you can work as a management consulting firm without knowing how to use PowerPoint, right? But you don't ever see that in a job description. Imagine accidentally saying that you don't like PowerPoint and you don't, you know, you, you don't know how to use it and, um, and you don't think it's, a, it's, it's an important software. I mean, if the other candidates have similar skills and experiences to, to you, right, then you lose the opportunity. The others proceed to the next stages, right? For something as simple as PowerPoint, right? You just lost right there, right? For example, let's say it's a B2B uh, sales job, right? And, and you know that they're using Salesforce uh, software, right? but it's not written in the description, right? So look at the advantage you have. What you can do is with the hiring manager, you can um, you know, talk about your advanced knowledge in Salesforce and, and tie that into a conversation, right? He or she, they will immediately give you a check on, on that mental checklist, right? Check, done, Salesforce, right? It wasn't even in, in the job description. A project management firm, for example, or a PM role, what methodology or framework are they using? Right? You talk about how efficient you are in running projects with MS projects or maybe Primavera, right? Imagine they're using Primavera and actually you talk about it before anyone asked for it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's not how my son would say. Um, massive advantage, massive advantage, right? Look, this is a competition, right? It's not a binary pass or fail situation. You know, I passed the interview, I failed the interview. No, no, it's not like that. You're not the only one interviewing for that role. If you get a rejection, it's not because you were not good, right? Uh, but because maybe the other candidate was just a little bit better, right? Just a little bit better. You never know. Maybe, maybe you lost an incredible opportunity only because the other candidate was just slightly better. You lost maybe like a couple hundred thousand dollars of salary, right? Maybe the other candidate just dropped the word Primavera software uh, and that little thing made the difference, right? And then they told you that you failed the interview. 
right? It's like this. You go to a grocery store to buy an apple, right? And you choose one apple compared to 10, 10 of them uh, on the shelf. It doesn't mean all the other apples failed. Just one of them was just a bit better. You know, it made a better, better impression, you know, slightly more shiny or the others had slight blemishes on them, right? Maybe dirt, maybe lack of PowerPoint, <laughs> right? Um, so that's, that's how simple things are actually, right? Um, but unfortunately, they do make uh, a, a very big difference. I want to talk about something different now. Um, you know that I mentioned before that HR are simple shortlisting function, right? You know, their job is to give the best candidates to the hiring managers for them to interview, right? They shortlist. That's, that's what they do, right? I mean, they interview to see which of these candidates are worth hiring managers time to interview, right? And, um, and for HR to put them in some sort of a quantitative analysis, they need point system. Yeah? Even if it's not written, it's always in the mind. Right? And one of those criteria in that point system is the number of years you spend doing the job you applied for, what I call relevant experience. Mind you, I didn't say overall experience because overall experience doesn't really make much of a difference. Right? The relevant experience. Meaning, how many years have you spent in your career doing this particular job, really? Like, you know, I don't care about any of your other experiences. I care about the relevant ones. So, whichever candidate has longer relevant experience, all else being equal, will progress to hiring manager interviews. Hmm? Do you remember that I mentioned it's a competition? Right? It's, it's not a you're good, you're bad situation. It's, it's a competition. If there are 10 candidates being interviewed all for this particular role, right, and all of them did fine, whoever has the longer relevant experience goes to the hiring manager interview, and the remaining guys, you will wait for your turn, right? Uh, maybe you will never go there. So, okay, so as always, let's use this for our advantage. How do we do that? So, Let's say you worked for five employers in the past 10 years. Now, I want you to find something relevant to the job you're interviewing for in each one of those five experiences the past 10 years, right? Because if you can do this, then do you know what happens? Now we have 10 years of relevant experience, right? Imagine the other candidate doesn't, doesn't do his homework, right? They don't, they don't do this, right? even though they could bump up their relevant experience to, let's say, 10 years, right? But because they didn't, they now have only three years of relevant experience, all else being equal. Who do you think gets progressed to hiring manager interviews? Obviously you and everybody waits, right? So just by strategically revising your resume before the interview, you doubled or tripled your chances and beat the majority of the competition. Boom! That's how simple it is. But then now you're thinking, wait a minute, Dennis, there's a problem here uh, because I got this job. Okay, now you got this job, did this interview, I'm sorry, through an online job board, I know, yeah? Job advertisement sites like monster.com, indeed.com, right? It's in their database and you can't change it for every single interview, it just won't work, right? The company, plus the company already saw that version of your CV. So what to do? It's too late. No, number one, um, actually, you know what, while we're on the topic, I want to open a very quick parenthesis here. Don't do that. That's not how you get a, get a job interview. Yeah, that's how you waste your time, online applications, right? That's how you waste your months and months and months and then you end up spending a long time unemployed uh, and then you become unemployable, right? The future interviewers question if you can really get back to working after six months of unemployment or because you wasted so much time with these guys, with these uh, websites, right? And, um, and and majority of those jobs advertised in those websites are not even real. They're fake. Do you know the companies sometimes manipulate the number of job posts they have just to give the image that the company is actually growing? They do that. How do I know? Well, I started my career at Standard & Poor's. It's a rating agency, right? Um, so I do know that some of those analysts and rating agencies take a look at the job post data, right? Um, it, it's a great leading indicator of, of growth, absolutely, right? But, but there's something even worse than this, fake job interviews. 
I know it sounds ridiculous, but hear me out for a second. What do you think HR do when they no longer have enough roles to recruit for? Do you think they just go ahead and you know speak with accounting? Um, hey, I'm available. You know, we're not hiring enough, and I don't want to lose my job. So can I help you in accounting, in in finance, in marketing? You think? No, right? What they do is instead of interviewing um, ten candidates for one role, which is fine, acceptable, they now interview one hundred candidates for just one role. So they're monkeying around, right? Just to look busy, yeah, just to fill up their calendars. You know, at the end of the day, no one wants to lose their job. This includes HR, right? So if they sit around all day long doing nothing, it won't be long before somebody starts laying them off. True, right? Okay, now why I why do I share this? Because even if you do a phenomenal job after this video, right, which I know you will, yeah, I know you will perform great. You will, you will, you will, but you will never know if they're really serious in hiring. Maybe they're just monkeying around, right? Maybe they're like 100 interviews to go for. It is disgusting and one of the major reasons why I launched my LIG program. Disgusting, but unfortunately, very common. Anyway, let's assume that this is real. Yeah, this is a legit, legitimate uh, job interview you're, uh, you're interviewing for, right? This is what I want you to do. I want you to revise your CV and include all of those relevant tasks that you've done before. And, and while doing it, I want you to remember the unwritten requirements we talked about, right? We discussed this. Um, and in fact, you can even play around with your title a little bit, just a little, right? Then send that revised CV to your interviewer before the, before the interview, okay? But I also want you to print it out, maybe multiple copies, and bring it with you, and you will leave that revised resume with the interviewer, okay? You will very clearly mention, hey, this is the most updated version, and that they should please put it in their database. Boom, right? You now have doubled your chances again, maybe tripled your chances, just with the relevant experience. I want to give you an example here, um, because you may have difficulty uh, perhaps finding relevant tasks, right? Let's, let's use an extreme uh, scenario where you worked as a librarian uh, for so many years, yeah? And now you're interviewing for, for operations role at a production facility, okay? It's pretty extreme, right? I mean, what does a librarian know about operations management, right? Yeah, but you know what? A librarian can very well be highly effective in setting up process flows, right? And that's how you perhaps organize massive amounts of books, you know, tens of thousands of them, or, or that you use a special software to sort out those books, um, which may work out in production facility too, right? See how we just created a relevance here. It, it was a, it, fine, this was a bit extreme, <laughs> I admit, but um, we had to stretch things a little bit. But you see my point. In this example, the process flows is the bridge between a librarian and the operations management role at the production facility, right? So the more you sort of like sprinkle these relevant tasks to your previous employments, the longer relevant experience you create. The longer relevant experience you have, the more competitive you get compared to other candidates because what? It's a competition, right? Okay. All right, now uh, one more important thing. Have I already mentioned that job interviews are performance acts? If I haven't before, um, they are performance acts. Um, there's absolutely no way mm, you can present who you truly are or you know, what you're, you're capable of in that 30 minute discussion or in two hours or in two days. It takes months of working with you to know what you're capable of, right? That's why it's a performance act. You just act in those 30 minutes. We're all, in a way, I'm sorry to say this, but we're all, in a way, we're actors, right? Um, that be yourself advice just doesn't work. Me in the morning at 5 a.m. or me at 8 p.m., right? Me what, in a good day, in a bad day? Yeah, there's no unified me. We're not robots, you know, who act the same way all the time. We get defensive, we get offensive, right? right? You know, sometimes we're aggressive, sometimes we're not. Um, sometimes we get misunderstood and we realize we, get, we got misunderstood. So the way we speak also changes. You can't be yourself in those 30 minutes. It's impossible. It takes longer, much, much longer, months, 
right? It's like you're looking at just a few hundred pixels in a monitor, yeah? And that is displaying, the, the monitor is displaying a beautiful picture, but you have no idea uh, that it's a beautiful picture, right? Because it's just a bunch of pixels, right? So you will have to pick and choose those few hundred pixels for them to see that, hey, it is a beautiful composition here. You know, it's a beautiful picture, right? And since it is a performance act, that means you'll have to audition. You'll audition on your own with your own cell phone camera, yeah? You'll first design and craft your answers in a paper or in a computer, and then turn on your camera and start delivering those answers, right? I want you to watch yourself after each shoot. You'll eventually realize that your performance gets much, 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 much better. You know, look at your first delivery and the last one. It'll, it'll take about three takes to maybe, maybe more to really nail it. You'll see, you'll be amazed. Okay, now I have a question for you. I promise that just by watching this video, you would double your chances, right? Do you think you did? I think you know you did. Now, you go do your best now, right? Attend that interview as the champion you are, right? You have all the tools necessary. And do you know how I know that you're a champion? Because you made it here. 50% of your competitors didn't make it all the way to the end of this video. In fact, probably 90% of your competition didn't even watch a single video, right? So the good things will happen to you as long as you keep this attitude, right? Doing something about it. And remember, if it doesn't work out, I'll be there for you. LIG will be available to sign up and, and we'll see what we can do about your career. Not now though. It's time to study now. Best of luck.